Welcome back everybody. Now today's video is kind of a product comparison. It's also kind of a public service announcement about something I've been dealing with pretty much my entire adult life and that is tinnitus. Some people call it tinnitus, some people say tinnitus, which is basically just ringing in the ears. I've had it for at least 37 years, maybe longer. I actually don't remember what true silence sounds like. I hear it 24-7, 365, it never goes away, although there are sometimes peaks and valleys. There are times where I hear it over everything, even at a concert. Sometimes it kind of blends more into the background, although it's always there. Whenever I get sick, it always gets worse. So I really don't know what the world sounds like without that constant ringing in my ears. And everybody with tinnitus has a little bit of a different experience, but let me show you approximately what I hear. And I should warn you, it may not be a pleasant sound. Check it out. So if you add that to the background of the world, here's what my experience with tinnitus is actually like. The tone is actually two tones. It's a 7100 hertz and about 12,500 hertz. The 7100 is a little bit off center, to the, more to the left, but it combines to make one overall tone that I hear nonstop. Whew, that's better without that, isn't it? Well, actually I wouldn't know. I don't know when my tinnitus began. It was obviously my early teens. I started playing in a band when I was 14 years old. Rehearsals in the week, gigs in the weekends, I go to concerts. I was already wearing earplugs by the time I was 18 years old. But by then, the damage had already been done. I've been diligent about them since then, not because I expect them to take the tinnitus away, because I don't want the tinnitus to get any worse. Now, the topic of tinnitus and earplugs always seems to come up among musicians because they're always dealing with loud music. Pete Townsend from The Who, he has severe tinnitus. Even Dave Grohl from The Foo Fighters recently when the talk show circuit was talking about his tinnitus because he said that one of the reasons he doesn't like to wear earplugs is because it makes him feel disconnected from the music. So he doesn't wear them and his hearing has actually suffered a lot from it. That feeling of disconnect is really bad, especially when you wear the cheap earplugs because they take so many frequencies out. And that's where a product like Eargasms or Vibes come in because they offer a cheaper alternative to the very expensive custom fitted earplugs that are available out there. These supposedly lower the volume without taking out all the frequencies to remove you from the experience. So today I'm gonna to be sharing my experience with two different types of earplugs, too cheap, too expensive. Now there's a category of much more expensive earplugs out there that can run from hundreds to thousands of dollars. I'm not including those. I'm mainly focusing on walk in the store, grab it off the shelf, consumer level earplugs. So let's take a look at the four contenders. All right, here are all four contenders, the two teams, the cheap versus the expensive. Let's take a closer look at each one of these before we get started. Let's start with the cheap team here. Now, these are both from the same brand, but these are two different kinds of earplugs. These are the ones a lot of people wear, the foam ones, and these are the ones that I typically wear. So these are the Max Ultra Soft Foam Earplugs. Uh, I'm sure you've seen these before. Everybody's seen these, right? $8.99 for a 50 pack. That makes it 18 cents a piece. This has a noise reduction rating of 32. All you do to use these is you twist them into a, a small cylinder, you stick in your ear, and it just blocks the sound. These are the Max Silicone earplugs. I've paid $3.96 for a six pack, which makes them 66 cents a piece. This is the one I've been using for years. I've probably literally used thousands of these. Uh, it's the one I've recommended over the years. Some people actually tear them in half or roll them and stick them in their ear. You're supposed to really just cover the ear, not, not stick it in there. I will admit there have been a few times I've actually not use it properly, but I'm gonna use it properly this time for demonstration purposes. These and these work with the same principle. They just block the sound by covering your ear. Let's check out the Vibes. These were on Shark Tank. I paid $26.95 for these. Okay, look, look, nice presentation, I'll say that. This one does come with three different sizes. They claim that it lowers the sound rather than blocks or muffles it. It has a noise reduction rating of 15. And then finally we have the Eargasm. Interesting packaging. I paid $37.88 for these. This one has over 9,000 ratings, 4.5 stars on Amazon. A noise reduction rating of 16. They also say that it filters out sound to allow you to hear clearly, but simply lowers the volume. It's like a, an empty case. So apparently they have two different shell sizes, but by default, the attenuation filter comes pre-installed only in the standard size shell, but I guess you have a smaller size if you want one. So there's a close-up of this one. It looks like you've it is interesting looking. All right, so here's the vibes on the right and the eargasm on the left. They look pretty different. About 27 bucks, about 38 bucks. Shark Tank, not Shark Tank. I've used the foam and the silicone earplugs for decades, so I didn't have to test them out too much to know how they work. But I've been using the eargasms and the vibes for over three months now. That unboxing was back in March, it's July now. 
In that time, I've gone to two NHL games, an NBA playoff game, I've flown, I've gone to concerts. Every time I've done that, I've taken my phone and jotted down notes for my experience to see how they actually compare. But before doing all that, I actually paid a visit to my friend Casey and his band Second Echo. They were gracious enough to let me sit in one of the rehearsals and prowl around, sticking my head up to the speakers to kind of test these out. And I also had a chance to talk to them about their experience with earplugs and tinnitus. So I've got my friend Casey Stickley from Second Echo with me. Casey and his band has, has offered to help me out with some earplug tests. <laughs> Before we get started, Casey, do you wear earplugs at all when you're performing? Not when I'm up front. For some reason, the earplugs, when I'm singing, they mess with just being able to hear. And I don't know, it's just kind of weird, but I drum for another band as well. Oh, okay. And I just found when I'm sitting behind the brass and the cymbals and everything, it just kills my ears. So yeah. I, I do not drum anymore without have some, having something in my ears. What kind of earplugs do you usually wear? Um, I go to Walmart and get a big tin of them. <laughs> so it's like the, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're like the cheapest ones. And I, they kind of get the job done because really I just need uh, that piercing, mm -hmm. that piercing frequency out of, out of my ears. And so, so have you ever tried any more expensive earplugs in there? I never have, never have, man. Like it's interesting because when you started talking to me about this, I was like, I don't know that I've ever like went out and bought like a singular set of earplugs. Yeah. It's always just like in yeah. bulk, you know? I never have either. This is the first time I ever tried, you know, the, the ones that supposedly just lower the volume rather than just block the sound out. And That's amazing to yeah. me, yeah. So Frank from Second Echo here, he actually told me that he has tinnitus. So yeah. we share that because I've had it for years. So right. tell me yeah. about your tinnitus. Uh, you know, from, from the job that I do and also from playing over years, uh, I probably didn't do as good a job protecting my ears as I should have. And uh, only when you get a little bit older and you start to, to, to realize you probably should have, uh, yeah, I notice it now. You, know, yeah. you watch TV, it needs to be up a little bit. Like, uh, when you're sleeping, you have to like have uh, white noise or something? It or? does help. Yeah. It actually does yeah. help. Um, and also just like hearing level sometimes. Yeah. You've tried the cheaper earplugs before, right? Yeah. And what do you think about using those when you're playing? You know, the problem I had, once I first started to realize that I was having a problem, um, I started to use the cheap earplugs. I lost all sense. Uh, and then that other band I sung as well. And sometimes I'll do back and vocals here. Um, all sense of tone, all sense of pitch. It really well, disconnects you from the music up there. You know? Completely disconnected. Yeah. It, it just takes you out of it. I couldn't really it, hear the, it, the, it, the, right. the little stuff. I've got John here. He's got some kind of expensive looking earplugs. I don't think these are consumer level uh, ear protection, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, these are ultimate uh, custom fitted um, six driver, custom fitted in-ear monitors. And these are these are a little bit more expensive than the the forty to fifty dollar consumer level ones, right? <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely an investment that you make to, to get yeah. them custom molded like that. So, what do you think about the, the foam earplugs? Like, what are your thoughts on those? Like, I going mean, to a concert or they work. Yeah. And if you understand that they're going to muffle the top end, then yeah. you know you can just kind of live with it. But they yeah. definitely do muffle that up. Yeah. I'm hoping these these newer, more expensive earplugs that I'm trying out can actually help bring some of those frequencies back without blowing my ears out, so. They are, so, that, so yeah. that's, that's very much like the ones yeah. that I used to use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so there's, there's a filter in those, yeah. and they help to, to keep a more natural response. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, ha I did take it to a hockey game, a Golden Knights game recently, and, and I did loud. notice, a, they're loud. <laughs> People don't realize how loud those hockey games are. And I did notice a big difference between those and the foam earplugs. Yeah. So you don't have tinnitus though. You, you've been able to avoid it all these years. Yeah, it, knock on I know, something knock on wood. Plastic. <laughs> all right, well, I guess we're gonna get started soon. So right. perfect. Thanks a lot. So although I can't show you exactly what I'm hearing, what I did was I sat down with the headphones and these earplugs and I tried to get EQ settings to kind of closely match what each one of them sounded like. So what I'm gonna do is show you an approximate simulation of how all these earplugs sounded when I was prowling around the Second Echo Studio.
So as I've been testing these out the last few months, sometimes I would have one vibe in one ear, one eargasm in one ear. Sometimes I did two vibes and two eargasms. I was really trying to mix things up to really get an idea of how they compared. So here's a few scenes from the other tests I did with these earplugs. We're at the Vivint Arena for the Utah Jazz and Dallas Mavericks. I've got my eargasms and my vibes. Taking these in to see how they work. I can definitely tell you there's a difference you hear in frequencies between the cheap earplugs and the more expensive ones. The cheap ones kill a lot of the mid-range and the high frequencies while the eargasms and the vibes let more of those go through. In fact, if you're interested, I'm going to put on the screen here the EQ settings that I use to try to simulate what each one of these earplugs sound like. Now I frequent a subreddit of tinnitus sufferers and it's kind of sad to see some of the new sufferers of tinnitus go on there and talk about their reaction to it. A lot of them are very distraught, some are desperate. They can't imagine having to live with this. Now, those of us who had it for a long time, we're kind of used to it, but it's really sad to see people get it for the first time when it's so preventable. I guess I was lucky that I got it as young as I did because it hasn't really had much of a negative impact on my life. I'm just completely used to it. I mean, I have to sleep with a fan blowing or some sort of white noise machine because the quieter it gets, the louder tinnitus seems. When you have tinnitus, you long for true silence because the silence that we hear is actually quite unpleasant. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of all four of these earplugs. As far as the eargasm go, I would say it gives you the most frequencies of all these. It's not perfect, but it's the most natural sounding of all of them. Now, as far as cons go, I'd say it's the most difficult to get in the right spot where you can get that benefit of all those frequencies. The vibes, I would say they're pretty close, almost as good as the orgasms, but the problem with that is that they don't go in as deep and they're also easier to lose. In fact, I lost one at one of the hockey games. For the silicone earplugs, I would say their pro is that they do a really good job of blocking out sound. They're also not real obvious when you wear them. The biggest con, everything's muffled. As far as the common foam earplugs goes, they also do a good job of blocking out sound, probably the best of all of them. But not only is the sound muffled, but they also stick out of your ears kind of like Frankenstein. Now, if you're just comparing the vibes versus the eargasms, one thing about the eargasms is if you don't want to deal with earwax, the vibes would probably be a better choice. Although the vibes do stick out more. I did find myself fiddling around with the eargasms, trying to get them in the right spot. Although once they were in the right spot, the sound was better. On the other hand, if sound quality is not that important, like you're doing landscaping or if you're using some machinery, the cheap earplugs are perfectly fine. They block out the sound, which is what you want. Not only that, but if you lose one, you're only out a few cents as opposed to 30 bucks. There is no cure for tinnitus, although there are some therapies in the pipeline that seem to have some success for people like notch therapy, although I don't think they're totally proven yet. So my PSA to you is to wear earplugs if you're going to a loud setting, whether you have tinnitus or not. If you don't believe me, go to that tinnitus subreddit and see how people react to it when they get it. There's no guaranteed second chance when you get tinnitus. But if you've used any of these earplugs or if you have tinnitus, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.